Hello there guys, this is NDM here, welcome you back to another episode of Let's Play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team. Okay, so in the last episode we uh, recruited Kyogre, and I did say in the last episode we are going to head over to Solar Cave. Now I'm going I'm to explain a few things because I have done some adjustments and rearrangements to our inventory and our stats. The things that we have now on equipped on us are defense scarves because we will be needing them because this dungeon is really tough. And we're not going to be in there to recruit Pokemon, we're not going to be in there to, you know, recruit any legendaries for that matter. We're in there to get T or HMs and to get and just to show you what the dungeon's like, what Pokemon are in there and how long it is and stuff like that. Um, so I've got myself well tooled up here. We've got loads of Revivers these, we've got loads of, well, uh, yeah, we've got a fair amount of Max Elixirs, we've got a fair amount of Warren Berries and a fair amount of huge apples. Which is really all you need to go through a long dungeon like this. And we do need a flying type that can go over water. And all these Pokemon here can fly over water. So I'm going to take Moltres with me. Because, I don't know. I've not actually used Moltres on my other Game Boy Advance uh, file. I used Zapdos instead to do this. But I could just, you know, use Wonder Mail codes and get the HM that way. But I want to stick true and do it like the real proper way of doing it you know showing me going through the dungeon to get this hm instead of being cheap and using wonder mail codes i could do that if i wanted to but then that's that's just being cheap and unfair i'm not showing you guys how to do it properly so i'm going to do it the real way uh obviously if i do because you can lose hms if you die so if i lose a hm if i die I will generate the Wonder Mail code. I'm not going to show you me going through the whole dungeon again just to get something that we've already gotten on video, <laughs> you know, because there's no point in me doing that, so. Alright, so let's get on with this, shall we? The Pokemon in here should be pretty easy to kill, um, and they shouldn't be taking too much damage against us, and he just threw a Hunger Seed at me. Curse you, Beldum! Uh, Hunger Seeds are very nasty because they, de they downgrade your um, stomach capacity, so... Your belly goes down a lot faster than what it should. But you can recruit Pokemon in here without using a friend bow. Of course you can do that, but it's a lot easier to use a friend bow because they appear more frequently and they ask to join your team a lot e a lot more frequently too. Look how big Moltres is in this dungeon compared to all the other Pokemon. It's like freaking huge. <clears throat> I was thinking about bringing Kyogre in here, but Kyogre I, I was kind of skeptical about because I didn't know if he could go over water, so I, I know he's a water type, but I don't know if he can, because I never used Kyogre coming through here before. And the EXP in here is really good, especially when you get to like floor 7, where you start fighting Hypnos. They give 700 EXP, and so, and um, well actually no, they give you nearly 800, because they give you 790 EXP, and Mr. Mimes give you 690 XP, so yeah, the dun the, this dungeon is probably one of the best dungeons in the game to go grinding in, so hopefully we get a few levels as we go through this dungeon. I'm going to try and kill as much Pokemon in here as possible so I can actually get a few levels because Pikachu and Venusaur aren't doing very good on levels at the moment. We should at least be about level 40 something by now, but we're not <laughs> kind of slacking on the grinding uh, scenario of things. But these things, Natus, don't give much EXP. They give you 17 and that's just, that's nothing. <laughs> 17 EXP is nothing. Compared to the XP you get later on. So yeah, the only Pokemon that you really get good EXP from on these floors are the Jinxes, which is a prime example right here. This is a Jinx, and it will give you 400 EXP, I think. And Moltres just totally desecrated uh, Jinx just then. <laughs> yeah, and Drowsies give you 440, which you saw earlier. But honestly, like, this may seem pretty easy at the moment. That's because this is the first few floors, but when you get deeper into it, the Pokemon get a lot tougher. 
you start fighting grump pigs and things like that that use psi or or psi waves i think that's what it's called how it's pronounced psi wave you know psychic psi wave and that's a long range attack and it does quite a lot of damage so Yeah, currently I'm trying to, on Red Rescue Team on my Game Boy, I'm actually trying to level up Farfetch to level 100, Voltorb to level 100, and Pseudo Wudo to level 100, and this is one of my favourite dungeons to come to, to get EXP. I don't need a defense scarf or anything like that for, for my Red Rescue Team file, because my um, Farfetch is level 60, and... Uh, he can pretty much kill everything in here without taking too much damage. I mean, obviously, I do need to come prepared with max elixirs and things like that because this isn't a, this isn't a short dungeon. And after this dungeon, I've also planned out like the next couple of videos. And the next couple of videos, we're just going to be doing dungeons with HMs in it because I want to get all the HMs. Because you do need the HMs to get to later dungeons because they are required to enter. It's like the Stormy Sea, you had to use Dive to get into it. Well, there are dungeons where you have to use Surf and Fly and things like that to get into them. And there is a dungeon that I know of that we have unlocked that has the HM Fly in it. And that's Wyvern Cave. And great. Uh, oh no, his defense scarf became sticky! Oh, you are kidding me. No. Oh, that's a, that's one of the things I really hate about this game is the traps in dungeons. Oh, we'll be seeing that a lot more. <laughs> I'm afraid. Traps in dungeons. Jesus. They are your worst enemy. I swear to God. Because there are traps that can make your food all grimy. There are traps that can enable you to use your items like because what the sticky um trap does it makes your item become ineffective so you can't use it especially if it's an equipped item like now his defense won't be as good as what it was because his defense scarf is now sticky so he can't use that anymore until you leave the dungeon i mean it's not permanently sticky the item isn't completely spoiled you can use it um upon after leaving the dungeon so don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, the defense scarf that Venusaur has is not um, completely ruined. <laughs> if Even if it was, I could just, you know, generate another Wonder Mail code. It's not much of a big issue. At the end of the LP, I might act, wait on the final episode. Um, I might actually put the link to the Wonder Mail page for you, where I get all my Wonder Mail codes from. So then, if you want to do a let's play, or if you want to play this game yourself, you can do that. Um, well, I'll show you the website that I use anyway. It's pretty efficient. It's very easy to use. So if you want to start generating codes, you can to make your game experience a lot more easier. <laughs> Because I'm telling you, I wouldn't have been able to get all the legendaries in Red Rescue Team when I was playing that without using one of our codes. Because there are some dungeons in that game that are ridiculous and you need to generate stuff to be able to get through it. Like defense scars, power bands, all that stuff. Stamina bands. Stamina band is actually really good. Uh, the stamina band um, decreases how fast your hunger uh, goes down. So... I uh, hate the move confusion, because now I'm confused, which is not good. Moltres, help me out here, please. <laughs> You're a legendary Pokemon, you're supposed to help me. Take away this confusion. You know what's bogus about Pokemon? That they have a, they have a, a status cure for pretty much every element in the game. 
but they don't have a status cure for confusion. And confusion is probably the most annoyingest freaking ailment in the game. Like, I'd rather take poison or burn or paralysis than confusion. Because confusion, you always end up hitting yourself or you end up hitting other po- like. Like, especially in these games, if you get confused, you end up hitting your other Pokemon. But if you're playing it on the original, then, you know, you just end up hitting yourself. Or if you're doing a double battle in in the, in the original Pokemon games, um, you end up hitting your partner. And that can end up killing them, and that can screw you up big time. And another annoying ailment, which isn't really an ailment, is when a Pokemon decreases your defense by using the Screech or Leer. That can get quite annoying. Great, I've got two Pokemon on my ass now. I've got a Mr. Mime and a Luna Stone or whatever it is. Or a Luna Tone. <laughs> Yeah, that secret power move is actually really good. So is hidden power as well. But hidden power is like one of those moves that is randomly generated. It either is super effective against fire, ice types, you know, electric types, ground types, water types, you name it. Every single type, but it... it just depends on what... I think it depends on what environment you're in. Like if you're in a fiery environment... It might be a water type move that you use, so then it's super effective against the fire types. Alright, I need to use a huge apple to satisfy my hunger. <laughs> yeah, Moltres can go over the water. Alright, that's cool. So that's going to help out. Well, actually, no, I haven't got any keys. Oh, shoot. Uh, no. Well, hopefully I'll find a key throughout this dungeon somewhere. <laughs> I mean, this dungeon's not over yet, so maybe we might find a key, but I should have probably explored those first couple of falls more thoroughly. But anyway, we got to level 38. And this is all good in grinding, so, I mean, it doesn't really bother me if we miss out on the keys or anything. At least we get some levels and stuff. So that's something good that comes out of it. Which means we'll have to take Moltres through here again. You know, in the next episode, maybe. I don't know if I'm going to show you me going through the dungeon again. But, well, what I would do is get through the dungeon to a point where I do find the key. And then use the key on the dungeon door where the HM is hidden. And what I'll do is I'll make a cut. Or, well, no, I'll start the video outside the dungeon door, and I'll show you that I've got a key, and then I'll open up the door, and then we'll get the HM that's inside the door. That's what I would do if I don't find a key in this dungeon. Um, so, yeah. Don't worry. Uh, this footage is not a waste of time, because I am showing you something new here. This is a new dungeon we're going through. And I am using one of my legendary Pokemon, so that makes things even more interesting. Wait, is that a cleanse orb? Oh, please say it is. No, it's a switcher orb. Get out of here! I don't want that crap in my inventory! Yeah! Ha, Dukin! <laughs> ha, Dukin! I don't know where that came from, but... <laughs> uh, I guess I've got Street Fighter on the mind. From playing too much Smash Bros. Yeah, I was playing that quite a lot yesterday. Yeah, there's an, th that's a prime example of where a door is. But we need the key. There might actually be a key on this floor, I don't know. Well, let's have a look and see, shall we? I know where Surf is. Surf is on, like, floor 10, but you don't even need a key to get, to get Surf, I don't think. So that might even be something also to look forward to. I think behind that door is Dive, but we've already got Dive. So we don't really need that. Yeah, Surf is like on floor... Floor 15, I think? Or it might even be on floor 20, which is the last floor of the dungeon. Uh, I'm not sure, actually. 
No, please don't attack me. No, Moltres, what you doing, dude? Luckily, I had a reviver seed. <laughs> Plenty of reviver seeds. And that also brings back my PP, so I guess that's kind of good. That means I didn't have to resort to using a max elixir, which I have very little of in my inventory. There's a key! Damn it! Right, okay, you know what? I'm getting rid of uh, the Perison Band because I don't need that. I don't even know why I picked that up. Well, there we go. We've got ourselves a key. <clears throat> And this is the only dungeon in the game where I think you need to use keys. Like, the other dungeons in the game, you don't even need to use them. Tyler grew to level 35. Sweet. So yeah, the uh, defense scarf has actually proven to be quite effective. I, I, I should be taking like 50 or maybe 30 damage in this dungeon by every attack that these enemies have been dishing out. But... Uh, I've been doing quite good. 379 EXP. Oh, lots of money. Yeah, we do need more money. That's something else that we need. Because, uh... We need to buy some more friend areas so we can recruit some more Pokemon. I do have a lot of money in my bank now, actually. I have 13,000, I think. Something like that. But considering, like, a lot of the friend areas now are 5,000, um, some, I think some are even 10,000, but they're the ones that are really, really, uh, obscure, I guess you could say, because you get those, like, the Pokemon that you recruit in those kind of friend areas are in later dungeons. And that's why they cost so much. Well, this is the after game after all. I mean, you don't have to do all this crap, but, you know, it's still part of the game, so... <laughs> yeah, I should have done this on my Red Rescue Team playthrough, but I didn't, because I knew eventually that I'd do Blue Rescue Team. And Blue Rescue Team, in my opinion, is a lot f is a lot better. But I, I have a Blue Rescue Team cartridge, but it doesn't work. Now, I've always I've always had Red Rescue Team. I've always had res Red Rescue Team. Um, ever since two thousand six. But I started a new file um, in 2012, I think. 2000, no, 2013, yeah. Christmas Day 2013, I started it, and I've gotten every legendary. I got Celebi, um, all the really hard Pokemon. The only ones that I haven't got are Reggie Rock, Mew, and Jirachi. I know, right? Reggie Rock, whereas I have Reggie Ice, Reggie Steel. I missed out Reggie Rock on the first time going through because I managed to kill him and didn't recruit him. Whereas all the other ones I did, strangely enough. Yeah, go figure. I guess Reggie Rock is the hardest one to get <laughs> out of the three. They're really hard to get in, um... Pokemon Emerald, though, I, I can't even understand that Braille bullshit. We have to do all the Braille coding. I, I've, I've got Alpha Sapphire, but I haven't... Well, Alpha... Uh, no, not Alpha Sapphire, Omega Ruby. But I kind of stopped playing that after a while. I don't know why I did. I, I'm... Well, at the moment, I'm now playing Black... Black 2. Pokemon Black 2. Because that's the generation I completely skipped. I skipped black, and I skip and I skipped black too. So it's the generation I just completely skipped, and then I went back to X and Y straight after, which was the next generation, obviously, because we're up to generation seven now, aren't we? 
I think it's Generation 7. I, I don't know. I've lost track. I know Emerald is Generation 3, Crystal's Generation 2, and then Blue and Red and Generation 1. I think Fire Red is Generation 2. I'm not sure because I know Fire Red doesn't have Generation 3 Pokemon in it. I I'm pretty sure they don't. I, I don't know. I know there's like the th one island, the two island, the three island, which I will do when I LP Pokemon Leaf Green, which will be in the future. I'm not going to do that anytime soon because I'm doing a Pokemon Blue versus race and I'm kind of getting... Like, I'll probably be bored of Kanto after I beat <laughs> uh, the Pokemon Blue race. So, I, I guess our next major Pokemon game will be at Pokemon Gold, Pokemon Silver, or Pokemon Crystal. The other one of them that I'll do next. I'll probably do either Gold or Silver, actually, because Crystal is slightly different to Gold and Silver. Hmm. <clears throat> And I know that because I had um, I had Pokemon Crystal and I briefly played Pokemon Silver, so I like, I, I knew the difference a mile away. I just knew it because in um, Pokemon Crystal you can get the legendary dogs, but in um, in in uh, Gold and Silver I don't think you can. Oh, I should probably be ending off the video pretty soon. I don't know how long I've been recording this for. How long have I been doing this video? Uh, I don't know. I've kind of gotten lost in the commentary and recording and talking. This is all too overwhelming. Ah, oh, there's, a, there's a door, right? Okay, well, we're going to do this right now. Um, let's get the key and use it. And we don't even have to walk on any water to get it. And we got Waterfall. Nice. That is awesome. Alright, so that's the HM we just got. And you can tell if it's the HM because the disc is gold. It's a gold disc. And we shall also be getting Surf as well. I don't know if to end off the video here and just record like the next video of me finishing the rest of this dungeon off. And then, uh, well, that would be two Pokemon videos I upload today, then, won't it? Or I could just make a save state and then continue on. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do that, actually. Okay, guys, in the next episode of Let's Play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team, we shall finish up Solar Cave and, um,. Well, yeah, we'll yeah, finish up Solar Cave, we'll get Surf as well, which is on 420, I believe. And then we're done. We don't, we don't need Dive, because we've already got Dive. So that means that this dungeon will be completed. Alright guys, yeah, that's cool. Okay, so I'll see you guys in the next episode. So until then, this is Andy Anderson. Thanks for watching, take care everybody, see you in the next video, and goodbye.